Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is the old, old captain coming to you live from Crooked Creek with this week's Crooked Creek Hem of the Week. <clears throat> Last week I paddled with the camera facing me. This morning I thought I would paddle with the camera facing out so you could see some of the beauty that Annie and I see on a, on a regular basis. It doesn't take long to see the leaves are turning and as we get on up the creek you'll see a lot of leaves actually on the water and um, I have seen it where we the leaves were so thick you cut through the cut through the leaves like an icebreaker up in the Arctic or something but it's just a beautiful time of year. Our text this morning is in Acts chapter 19, beginning around verse 8 and going to about 20. The setting is in Ephesus, and this is Paul's third missionary journey. Now, the city of Eph Ephesus was a huge, huge um, city, and um, a, lot, a lot going on there. And it was um, located in, in the scripture, it'll mention Asia, but when most of us think of Asia, we think of China and Japan and, and like that. But this is like Asia Minor, like modern Turkey. So that kind of gives you a, a setting of where, where the lesson is. The, um, the area was full of sorcery, full of black magic, full of demonic forces, and just stuff that's just totally pagan. And, and so um, the scripture says that God gave, um, in verse 11, says God worked unusual miracles by the hand of Paul. Now, it was unusual for Paul to heal the sick with a touch. It was unusual for Paul or Peter or any of the disciples to raise the dead. Now, that's unusual enough, but for some reason, God chose to step it up a notch in this scripture so that um, they even took like a, a handkerchief or a headband or a a piece of um, Paul's um, apron, you might say. And they would take it and take it independently over to a sick person or someone who was demon-possessed. And that, um, that cloth was used as a tool, I guess you'd say, a visual aid, and that person would be healed. Now, uh, the healing was not in the cloth. The healing was not in Paul's name. The healing was in the name of Jesus. And again, it was an unusual time and it was an unusual miracle. It says in verse 12, so that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick and the disease left them and the evil spirits went out of them. So it was a kind of a weird, weird situation by, by today's standards. But there were people in that area who were, um, who professed to have some of these same qualities. They said that, you know, they were like itinerant sorcerers or itinerant wizards and and they they proclaimed to be able to exorcise demons they they pretended to be uh, able to heal and do those sorts of things and in my mind it's kind of like the old in the old um western should have a fell in a wagon that would sell um snake oil or some kind of special ointment if you if you take this, it's good for rheumatism, or it's good for this, or good for that. It'll heal whatever ails you. Their, their motive 
was strictly money and and it had nothing to do with um bringing honor and glory to the name of jesus but simply to bringing money to the people who 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 um we're trying to trying to do that. We're going to turn around because of that tree. But um, at any rate, um, these wannabes kept um, watching Paul and listening to Paul, and and he was healing and he was um, doing his thing in the name of Jesus. Well, they thought, well, shoot. If he can do it, we can do it, because we don't, we got all these incantations, we got all this fancy roots and uh, oil and stuff, and he said, if all we got to do is proclaim the name of Jesus, then um, we can do that as well. Well, it just didn't work out that well for him, because whenever um, they tried to to remove the demons from this fella. It says that, um, that they tried in the name of Jesus and in Paul, and the evil spirit even spoke to, to these guys. It was the seven sons of Siva. And the evil spirit even spoke to them and said, now we recognize Jesus and we know who Paul is the who in the world are you? And so they they weren't able to do anything in Jesus' name. And if you read on further, you'll see how the how the Spirit um, empowered that man to over overcome them and give them a good whipping to get get their heart right. So um, it was all about the name of the Lord. So. The situation arises, where was their motivation? Um, Paul's motivation was to magnify the name of Jesus. His, that was his motivation for living. Paul's motivation was to bring glory to the name of Jesus. Their motivation was to put money in their coffers. You know, there's televangelists today that'll say, if, if you'll donate a minimum of so many dollars, um, we'll send you a prayer handkerchief or something like that. And all that originated, I'm sure, with this scripture, but I dare say some of them are no different than the sorcerers that we see in our scripture today. But. That leads me to another question, and that is what motivates you and I to do the service that we do? Do we um, visit Savannah Court? Do we do the Crooked Creek Hymn of the Week so that we can get an attaboy on our back, so that we can get 800 likes on Facebook, or do we do it to bring attention to Jesus, to bring attention and to lift up the name of Jesus. Jesus said at one point, he said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men to me. It's our job just to lift up Jesus. It's our job to share our faith. It's our job to tell about the fact that Jesus died on the cross, to tell about the fact that he died and was buried, to tell about the fact that he was gloriously resurrected and they, that he died for our sins. The rest is up to God. And, and I talked with a boy one time, he said, some kids catch on quick and some kids catch on slow and some, sadly enough, never catch on. And, and that's the way it is when we share the gospel. Some folks will catch on, some folks won't. But again, that's not our responsibility. That's not our charge. Our charge is to, to um, just put him out there and, and let the Holy Spirit go from there. So I guess 
Motivation is the key word for today. What's, what's your motivation for service? And you might be saying, well, I don't have a problem with that because I don't serve. I don't do nothing. Well, if that's the case, then you, you may need to do even more self-evaluation. We need to be serving. When I went to Berry College, the slogan was biblically based. And it said, even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister. And that was Martha Berry's theme for her life. And hopefully that's your theme and hopefully mine. I don't know if you've noticed, this is kind of to the side, but we've had periods where there were no leaves, like we're in now, and I'm going back up. But um, for a spell, we were up through thick, thick leaves. Well, that's got nothing to do with the lesson. But anyway, motivation. What motivates you? And that's something for us to, us to think about. Um, what about what motivates me is fairest Lord Jesus. Fairest Lord Jesus. That's our, our hymn of the week. It's number 176 in this particular hymnal. It was written, it was an, anonymous. And it's a German hymn written in the 1600s. So that's, um, that's a long time ago. Fairest Lord Jesus. So um, I'm not sure that I can title and sing and look at those words at the same time. But um, I'm going to try my best. Fairest Lord Jesus. Four verses. <clears throat> Fairest Lord Jesus, ruler of all nature, O Thou of God and man, the Son, Thee will I cherish, Thee will I honor, Thou my soul's glory, joy, and crown. Fair are the meadows, fairer still the woodlands, robed in the blooming garb of spring. Jesus is fairer, Jesus is purer, who makes the woeful heart you sing. Folks, uh, that last line it says, Jesus, fairest Lord Jesus, even makes the woeful heart to sing. A woeful heart. We just buried Ramona's mother two days ago, and, and this woeful heart is singing because of his relationship to the fairest Lord Jesus. Verse 3. <clears throat> fair is the sunshine, fairer still the moonlight, and all the twinkling starry hosts. Jesus shines brighter, Jesus shines purer than all the angels heaven can boast. Before we go on to the... Um, last verse I just want you to look only a supreme creator could create what we're seeing right now I mean the colors on the trees the leaves are so thick you can't hardly see the water and um, it happens on a schedule I mean it's not by chance it happens every year we've been here nine years and every year toward the end of october this is what the creek looks like we'll come back up here in december and there won't be any leaves 
anywhere on the trees and you can look way back up in the woods. We'll come back in um, March and April and May and you got new life everywhere. Things are budding out. And folks, that just, that just didn't happen. It, it's all about God. In fact, the first verse says, Fairest Lord Jesus, ruler of all nature, O thou of God and man the Son, thee will I cherish, thee will I honor, thou my soul's glory, joy, and crown. Okay, we're going to sing the last verse. Beautiful Savior, Lord of all the nations, Son of God and Son of Man, glory and honor, praise, adoration, now and forevermore be thine. He's worthy of our praise, folks. He's worthy of our following. He's worthy of our worship. I hope you've had a great weekend. I hope you um, will have a wonderful week to come. Annie says she hopes you didn't mind staring at her for the morning. But um, she's, uh, she's a sweetheart. But anyway, we hope you have a wonderful day. We thank you for joining us for this week's Crooked Creek Hymn of the Week. We try to mix it up, keep things a little different. If it's been an encouragement to you at all, let me encourage you to share it with someone else. And in the meantime, we're going to head on back home. So you take care. Thanks for stopping by. God bless. Come see us on Crooked Creek.